So are all brake pads created equal? Well, they're not. In this video, we're going to look at the complexities of brake pads, brake pad selection, and just give you the information you need to determine which would be the correct type of pad to use on your car. It will depend on the car and your driving style as well, and how the car is being used and the environment you're in. And we're also going to look at some of the telltale signs that your brake pad wear is excessive and you need to think about replacing them. So brake pads are essential. They form friction. So the pads are squeezed against the brake rotors or the brake discs if you're in the UK. The brake pad has been a crucial element of a car's braking system. Ever since the car was really invented, we've come a long way from those early disc brake systems. And the formulation of those early pads was primarily asbestos. They loved asbestos because it was hard wearing, it was heat resistant, and it was very, very cheap. But subsequently, we've discovered asbestos isn't the best of substances to be emitting into the environment. It can cause a whole multitude of serious health problems and complications. So thankfully, we're no longer using asbestos. But with new, more stringent emissions regulations, the legislators are now starting to look at brake pad dust and the dust that they give off. So we're at a point where the formulation of brake pads is going to undergo another evolution as we move towards meeting these higher emission standards. So the crucial things with brake pads really is their ability to stop the car and resist the amount of heat that goes into them. Now you want your pad to warm up fairly quickly to be in its operating temperature range as soon as possible on the road. And for most drivers, you won't be using the brakes that regularly it'll be sort of every now and then the brakes are often gently applied. So another consideration is also the noise. So pressing these friction surfaces into the rotors or the discs will generate noise. So depending on the type of construction of the pad, you will have varying degrees of noise. If you're doing track days, you're going to be generating extreme amounts of heat. So you need a pad that is specially formulated to resist those high temperatures. But the downside of these high temperature pads is generally the noise that they produce. They have more metallic components in them to allow them to have that higher operating range. So there's always going to be a compromise between the noise, the braking efficiency, and the pad's resistance to heat buildup. And you really do need to choose something that's appropriate. A high performance pad is not suitable for road cars, for example. So to help us in making decisions, you will often find that different regions have a certain set of standards that pads have to meet in order to be approved for road use. So in Europe, we have the R90, there's various ISO certifications, and different countries have got different testing regimes. And they basically assess the pads friction, the emissions, and various other things. And if it passes, it's then approved for road use. So most of these pads that are approved for road use are actually very, very effective at stopping the car. And there's very little extra benefit to going to high performance pads on conventional road use. They don't generally stop the car any sooner than you would get on standard pads, unless those pads are absolutely dire. So how are pads made? You look at a pad and you kind of take it for granted, but there's a whole set of layers and ingredients that go into your average brake pad. There's the resins that hold everything together within the pad. The pad structure is reinforced with fibers. Then other ingredients and components are added to provide varying levels of friction and ability to withstand heat. And as we said at the beginning, there's often a bit of a trade-off there. So you're choosing a pad that's got either really good wear resistance or really good friction, and whether it produces a lot of noise or it resists these high temperature operations. They also contain abrasives and lubricants. So you certainly want the abrasive, that's the whole nature of the brake pad itself, but you don't want them to wear out too quickly. You don't want them to damage the rotors or the brake discs themselves. So they balance the amount of wear and the friction that goes on with a very clever formulation of substances that look at improving the lubrication or its ability to slip over the surface, but also its ability to bite the surface and create friction. And then other components are added to reduce the noise and the harshness of the brake when it's actually applied. So there's three main primary types of pad material. You've got the ceramic brakes right up there at the top. These are the high performance ones. They're very, very expensive. They offer fantastic levels of resistance of heat. They last a long time. They produce less dust, but they do cost a lot more. 
then you've got the metallic pads, which generally speaking offer really good braking performance, but they tend to be more noisy in operation and they create a little more dust. And then you've got a whole market of organic pads, which generally speaking are quieter, they're cheaper, but they wear out more quickly. But within each of these categories, there's a whole series of formulations. So as the brake pad is actually designed and created, characteristics can be chosen to suit varying driving styles. So we also have to bear in mind that the back of the pad is pressed by the brake calipers or the pistons and the brake pad material needs to be bonded to that surface. And often the metallic pads, it's very hard to get them to bond correctly. So the cheaper pads will often use some kind of adhesive glue or some other simple cheap method for affixing the two. And we have seen them breaking apart in extreme conditions where a lot of temperature is put into them. A lot of the better quality manufacturers have actually incorporated some kind of hook system to secure the pads to the backing plate. So that's certainly something to look for when you actually buy a pad. So how do you know that your brake pad is due to be replaced? Well, there's various signs to look out for. A degradation in braking performance is often a big sign that perhaps your pads have started to wear out to the extreme levels. If you visually inspect the pads, you may notice that the friction surface is starting to become very, very thin. You may start to have a vibration when braking, particularly if things have not worn efficiently in the braking system and the biggest telltale is noise so you may hear a grinding noise and you may hear a squeaking noise so the squeaking noise that brakes make is actually being designed into pads so as they wear down they are designed to start to squeak and it's a squeak you can't really ignore so when you get that squeaking noise it really is time to replace those pads it'll drive you nuts if you don't replace them in fact many modern cars have a dashboard warning light that will tell you when the brake pads are due to be replaced. And some of them will actually give you an indication on how worn the brake pads are. And that can be quite useful to just gauging how much life you've got left. You can schedule the replacement of the pads at a time that's convenient to you rather than having it forced on you with little notice or warning. If you don't replace the pads early enough, it can lead to very, very expensive repair bills. My own experience, I was visually checking the brakes. I didn't have any of the other telltale noises other than perhaps a bit of a grinding noise that I noticed. So I started looking at the brakes and by inspecting them, it seemed like there was plenty of life left in them. But actually what happened is they were wearing unevenly on the front and back sides and I was only looking at the outside. So that was a rookie mistake that I made. And as a result of that, the insides have become so worn down, we had the metal backing plate of the brake pad making contact with the rotor or the disc and it started to score the disc and I had to replace the discs which otherwise would have done for many many more years so never assume that the pads are wearing evenly make the pad inspection a regular part of your car's servicing so wear rates will vary tremendously I've seen people needing to replace brake pads after 20,000 miles I've seen brake pads lasting 70,000 miles I think the ones on my car have probably done about 40 or 50,000 miles and they're just starting to get to the point where they need to be replaced but it depends so much on your driving style. If you're always on the brakes and you're using the brakes a lot, and if they're always at the upper end of the operating temperature, that can accelerate the wear and tear that those brake pads actually experience. If you're a very gentle driver and you're focusing on economical driving, then you'll save money because you won't be replacing the brake pads as often. You won't be having as much fun though, we could certainly argue. And the weather conditions where you live will also go some way to determine what type of pad you use. So these hot racing pads that need a few moments to build up heat before they reach their optimum friction operating range are not as suitable in colder weather conditions. So they start off at a lower baseline and they take that little bit longer to warm up. So generally speaking though, most pads that we see sold are suitable for road use, but some of them are totally unsuitable for track day use. So if you're taking your car on a track, those brakes are going to be much hotter and that is where you're going to typically experience the problems. So I would certainly recommend if you are doing regular track days to specify a high performance pad, even get a set of pads that you can use on the track and switch to conventional road pads for your everyday drive. It's a little bit of a hassle, but it keeps the car safe and effective in both situations. And in the long term, you'll be saving money because you're not paying out for road spec pads as regularly because you're using the performance ones on the track. 
and you're not using up your road pads on the track as well. So track pads do tend to last longer than road spec pads just because the way they're constructed, they're designed to last in those extreme conditions. So I hope this video has been useful to you. You've learned a little bit about brake pads, brake pad construction, the typical signs that you have that the brake pads are nearing to be replaced. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned. And I've lined this video up for you if you're interested in getting the best performance from your car. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.